everybody, welcome back to Let's Play XCOM Enemy Within Slash Unknown. Remember, on the last episode, we uh, did that Exalt mission, which was actually surprisingly difficult. Uh, if I go back quickly to my barracks here, you can see that the vast majority, well not the vast majority, many of my soldiers are wounded. One of them comes back in a day, which is why this is really unfortunate, because basically they've guaranteed me this squad. I don't have a choice. These four people are injured. These six people are fine, so these are going to be the six people that we use, but after that, some of these people are going to be out of commission for a little while. It might, be the, it might be a good idea to hire some soldiers. We have 118 credits. Let's just hire three soldiers. I probably should have actually gone to officer training school first and picked up the new guy thing with the gray market, and they'd be squaddies right away, but whatever. Um, alien abductions. They're all going to be very difficult. We have Sao Paulo, Brazil. We have Chihuahua, Mexico. And we have uh, Japan. Sapporo, Japan. We should probably go with, you know, I'm looking at the rewards here. As mentioned, we're kind of a little bit short on recruits, a little bit, but the credits are probably more valuable, so I think I'm going to go to Mexico. Yeah, we'll do that, even though the, getting another sniper from Japan might be the best idea, but anyway, we'll just do it this way, and I think it'll be fine. So, this is our squad. We can't really make any uh, alterations to it, except what we should absolutely do is give her the laser rifle. How does the plasma rifle work? It's 4 to 6 with an 8 to 10 critical damage. Whereas the laser rifle, 4 to 6 with an 8 to 10 critical damage. And exactly the same... Uh, exactly the same critical chance? Yes, but... This has a plus 10 aim bonus. So actually, the light plasma rifle is, if I may say so myself, better than the assault... Or sorry, the laser rifle? Do I have anybody else decked out with the... Oh, you've got the... The cat is going crazy in the background here. You've got the heavy laser. Okay, so that's fine. Is everybody else decked out with what they need? You have the sniper rifle, the laser sniper rifle. Yeah, I think we're good to go. It's kind of unfortunate that we've had such a high density of missions. I mean, it's not unexpected as we get a little bit further into the game. Of course, uh, Big McLarge Huge is back and good to go as soon as we land. I think we should be fine on this mission regardless, but um, anyway, what I'm getting at is we have all this like stuff that I want to be done as soon as possible. We have so much research to be done. We have so much, uh, or so many things being built by the engineering department, so many upgrades from the, fan uh, the foundry as we speak. Uh, so in like two weeks, we're going to be in a really good position, but unfortunately the game keeps sending us out on these missions over and over and over. By the way, I just realized I'm an idiot, and uh, Kuznetsov here, if I may say so myself, uh, does not have any carapace armor. So that's a, a stupid oversight on my part. Again, you know, I, I throw myself on the, uh, the sympathy of the viewers, hopefully, or the mercy of the viewers for making a mistake like that. But by the same token, I really wish that XCOM had a button, and the button was just like, you know, give people the best equipment that's objective. Like, there's no reason why I would ever want... Uh, I'm going to move this guy out a little further just to see if we aggro somebody. Um... There's no reason why I would ever want him to just go out there with, like, the standard body armor. So, you know, it's not like it's a customization thing. It's just kind of annoying because it, it, it's basically objectively better. But, hey, that's that's how XCOM works sometimes, right? Like, you, uh, you know, sh should pay attention. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in a difficult position. So we're going to move towards this meld canister. It looks exceptionally easy to get. I'm a big fan of that. So we'll actually move Fisher all the way over here because uh, because it looks so easy to get. And anytime I can get meld easily, that's awesome. Because I am going to, as soon as soldiers get back uh, and good to go, I'm going to send some of them to the gene lab. And probably I, I should really go to the officer training school. Like It's, it's stupid that I didn't before because... Um, to upgrade all of my new recruits to squaddies, because only squaddy level troops can actually go in for gene modifications. So I could actually, like, basically build a super soldier in the laboratory. Do we have any? Nope, no units there. Okay. I could build the super soldier in the laboratories before even taking them out on a mission, whereas otherwise it's going to require one mission to get them up to the point where they're squaddies, and then you lose them for another three days after that. And, you know, it's, it's uh, not an impossible amount of time, but an annoying amount of time to spend, uh, and resources to spend on a unit. So. Meld canister number one. Uh, I don't know that we have had an easier meld canister than that over the course of the entire game. That was an exceptionally relaxing meld canister to get. We used a battle scanner. It was fine. Uh, we we did have to use run and gun, but no big deal. That was mostly to make sure that I could actually go over here, click it, then go into Overwatch. And we'll do basically the same thing with you right here and put you on uh, all for one Overwatch. One for all. All for one, one for all, whatever. I make the same mistake every time. And I'm being super aggressive with my moves here, but it's it's because uh, we already have this battle scanner, so we can be reasonably confident that we are not going to come across any uh, riffraff as we move out here. We should uh, really get to work on doing some more gene mods, by the way. It's been a while since we've uh, 
gene modded any soldiers. We gene modded uh, the lady that you can see on my right right now, or this guy's right, and uh, as a result, I forget what she has, but she's better, I guess. She's got the orange uh, thing on her name, which is what uh, what matters. Does it, I thought Android Cactus maybe had been gene modded? No, she hasn't. Okay. Uh, so let's slowly move out here anyway. So far, I'm struggling to maintain some kind of cogent commentary while we lack any aggression at all. I see a dead man being slowly turned into vegetables over here. Let's take a quick look around. If I was a meld canister, where would I be? I see street lights of green, skies of blue. Is that a meld canister? Who's asking, fool? I think to myself, what a salty world. We're nothing out here. Okay. Uh, so, I'm just going to slowly, well, not slowly, I'm just going to dash people up. How did we walk completely by them without noticing them? Well, we, we find ourselves in kind of a difficult position now. 47% chance to hit. Uh, what are our snipers on? 75% chance to hit. Okay, this is an easy choice. Please don't shoot your teammate point blank in the back of the head with a laser sniper rifle. Um... These guys are not on Overwatch, so we should just see if we can get an easy kill before that. 94% chance. That's good odds in my book. Yep, and the kill cam's gonna come out. It's it's supposedly a very difficult mission, so I'm, I'm a little... We'll just put you on Overwatch for now. I'm a little concerned about the fact that we haven't really seen anything too scary so far. There's no, uh, there's no uh, running gun left. But we have taken out both Thin Men, so it should just be a... Uh, just a single Sectoid left. Nothing to be too concerned about. Oh, okay, we have Vision and a 67. Oh, it's another Thin Man. So hopefully we get the kill here. All right, good critical there. Not necessary, but I'm glad we got it nonetheless. Um, that was an important one to get because uh, I really didn't want to have the opportunity to be poisoned. That should probably be pretty obvious, but uh, all right, so far so good. So let's move up while we uh, take our opportunities to reload here as well and get everybody kind of sorted out. So you'll be all for one, and we'll also have you reload this turn. And we'll move our sniper out and basically do exactly the same thing. No overwatch, but uh, a reload nonetheless. Usually very difficult missions. I think you're looking at 8 to 10 enemies of, of varying difficulties. I know it's very difficult, like as in exceptionally difficult, not very difficult as in the difficulty varies, but anyway, hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. Probably have this guy reload on this turn as well. Uh, we'll see if we run across any aggro. If we don't, then, oh, well, okay, I guess we know where it's coming from. Uh, can we move inside of the monastery? We can. That's not where the meld canister is, but it may be where the enemy is. So again, we're just going to use uh, our shitty mech, which is probably what I should have named her, as our, uh, our guinea pig here. Shitty mech guinea pig playing this fall at the Arcadian. 62, 51, 31. Okay, we'll take the 62. Looks like this is going to work out well for us. And again, this is basically the ideal uh, XCOM situation to find yourself in. Uh, anytime you run across an enemy, you or a wave of enemies, you kill them all, and then you continue going about your business. We do not have a shot here. It's kind of amazing to me. Where's I don't even know where the other one. Oh, he's inside. Okay, man, I guess that may, kind of makes sense. So we'll put you in all for one. Because I don't think there's much else I can do here. And then just Overwatch, unfortunately. Um, it's Jude Law. I'm going to move you back here. I, I realize I'm not getting the benefit of the full cover. In fact, I actually don't have any vision at all, which sucks. But this is a good opportunity for an Overwatch. Um, I, I really thought that I would have a shot there. But I don't. Shit happens. Now. Um, let's use a run and gun. Occasionally, this, this works out in my favor. And we'll run and gun all the way over here, where hopefully we'll have a shot at that floater. Man, she has a lot of health. Now. 32% or 47 we could have 47 or 2 times 32. Well, and I realize that this is probably better to have a 2 times 1 third chance than a 1 times like 50% chance, but I'm ah, sure let's go for it. Maybe we'll get lucky. Could have used the pistol as well, but I uh, really, if I'm only going to hit once, which is the likely scenario, or actually I guess it's the least likely scenario, um, then I would like to uh, have as many uh, opportunities, or I'd like to have the highest damage possible is what I was going to get at. So we have a few people on Overwatch, which is good because we're missing with uh, basically every other bullet that we fire. Now, the real question is, if I move this guy up here, will he have a shot, or will he just be completely flanked? He has a shot, and the shot is 27. What is this? The number of dresses Katherine Heigl wore in that movie? Okay, we got a kill. So at least someone around here knows how to do their goddamn jobs. This is where the Overwatch becomes critical here, although I expect that the floater will do what floaters do and run away. Yep. Okay. Well, good shit. Uh, we're gonna... 
continue to take some time to move everybody out to where they need to be here. And if the floater shows up, obviously we'll take precautions and we'll put everybody on Overwatch before it happens. So we saw the melds kind of floating from over here somewhere. Can't exactly see where it is. It's okay though, you'll go on all for one. Just do that right away so I don't forget. And then we'll probably have people move out and, uh, and reload as time goes on here as well. So as many overwatches as possible and uh, as many reloads as possible as well. So you're gonna be uh, your reload. This is light plasma rifle. You're gonna be an overwatch because your your weapon's a little bit less valuable than the railgun, uh, and we can always just reload it next turn. Similarly, uh, heavy because you can take two shots. I'm gonna give you a reload on this turn uh, and another railgun reload. Actually, I, I've mis I've misdone this. <laughs> That's not the proper conjugation, but I've, I've done this poorly because uh, I didn't need to have as many people uh, overwatching as I thought I did. We'll have you do uh, a reload, I guess. So we'll see if this floater shows up. So far, this has not really lived up to the difficulty of being very difficult. Here come our overwatches. Uh, maybe just one right off the bat. No, we're gonna get two. Railgun, this is what I'm hoping for. Hey, okay. I mean, she shot Roll Fizzle Beef in the armpits, which uh, I don't allow. Oh, that's one of the things that she has. When she gets a kill, they all get the pheromone bonus. Interesting. Uh, sure. That was an easy kill there, for sure. We're gonna move over here now. Probably with our shitty mech first. Because uh, she's the least valuable to me. And this is what exactly what I was looking for. So we're gonna find a mechanoid slash mechtoid on the first turn. 71% chance to hit raises some issues. Because I don't know whether to do that or to use the um, collateral damage. Uh, you know what, we're not gonna do collateral damage. I will instead do free aiming, and this will cause the, um, especially if I aim it properly, the cover that the mech dude and, first off, you didn't even let me finish my sentence. Secondly, that was the worst shot I've seen in my goddamn life. That was horrible. Now, one of you has lightning reflexes. It is, uh, well, obviously not you. Where is, okay, Cactus, you have lightning reflexes? Lightning reflexes, the first sh shot will miss. Always. Um, so I'm gonna move over here and this will hopefully, yeah, get the lightning reflexes, not from the sectoid. This is perfect. This is maybe the first time I've ever used uh, lightning reflexes intentionally as opposed to just like, ooh, lucky me. So I feel pretty good about that, actually. 69% chance to hit, 75% chance to hit, and rapid fire gives us two times 60. I'm gonna go with that. Okay, nine critical, even if she misses the next one. She didn't, uh, that was well fought in my opinion. 71% chance to get the kill here, we'll take it. Just finish it off. Big miss, but we still have a, a couple of units left and the overwatches have all gone off, so I'm pretty sure this mech dude, and I, I am deliberately going with that awful name, uh, is pretty much good to go. Good to be killed, I should say. Uh, does up to six damage, at least four, come on. All right, good shots. Plus, uh, the uh, adrenal neurosympathy will go off, that pheromone spray that she does when she's excited. Uh, probably, I guess not, maybe it has a cooldown period. All right, now all we gotta do is kill this sectoid, and uh, that could be the end of this mission, but I really doubt it. It, it should not be the end of the mission. Uh, it, otherwise, it's far too easy so far, but at least we'll have the opportunity to do some stuff back at base. Good, we're not done. Because that would seriously be <laughs> far too quick. Now, um, you know, the meld canister, of course, it's a secondary objective, but uh, it'd be nice to get as I'm taking a more aggressive approach with uh, genetic modification. For right now, though, um, let's take this opportunity to get everybody reloaded that needs to reload the meld canister. Oh, it's over there, actually. We'll probably get vision on it on this turn. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Well, we had to reload anyway, but this is a scary position to be in. Uh, Everyone, get behind cover that is a little bit more viable than the cover you're behind right now. For example, you should get right here. And you're gonna overwatch the shit out of this. Actually, you know what, you're so low on ammo, I think you should probably reload. Uh, you should overwatch. Uh, you know what, maybe you should probably reload. You definitely need to reload. This is gonna be a, a funky turn. I'm not sure how this is gonna work out for me. Uh, I'm gonna put you here. You should not have a shot, but you can go on Overwatch. No rockets left, unfortunately. Now, where was this guy? Am I? Ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna move her just behind this cover, which I think is a little bit better. All right, this is gonna be an interesting turn. Cyberdisks obviously uh, can be real heinous. I need them to walk out to a position where I can hit them with the. Uh, there we go. Where I can hit them with the railguns. So Kuznetsov. 
Well, looks like your shot's off. <laughs> uh, I tried. Now, someone's gonna get hit here. Cyberdisc should not do enough damage to kill the mech in one shot. That's a lot, but uh, it's, it's not enough to kill it. Watch the drone just come in and finish the job. Please don't let that be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, 11 damage is a lot. It's only three health left on that thing. Um, we're gonna just take our easy shots here at the uh, cyber disc. Sure, 14 with the critical hit is really good. Uh, good enough that I actually want to take my next shot at the drone just to kill it. Ah, whatever. Let's just kill the cyber disc first. I was really confident that we'd land that, but still. You know, the good news is that this may actually be the last enemy that killed the drone, too. That may have been the last wave that we dealt with. It is! And we got both meld canisters, 10 aliens killed, zero operatives lost. But uh, our mech trooper there is probably going to be uh, out of commission for a little while. But that's okay, because we got uh, big McLarge huge back. And also, Major Law, which first off, just great name, has been promoted. So she is our sniper, less than a kill per mission, which is not great. But anyway, uh, in the zone, killing a flanked or uncovered target does not cost an action. This could be really useful combined with something like uh, collateral damage from the mechs that destroys cover, or like throwing a grenade from somebody else, or allows both actions to be used for standard shot, headshot, or disabling shot, provided no moves were made. Meaning I could take two shots on a single turn, but no more. Whereas with collateral damage, I could possibly take like five shots on a single turn. It would be unlikely, but it would also be awesome. Hmm, she's got 69 will. It, but it looks like it just says Will 69, which is just like, all right, Jude Law. I mean, first off, I didn't know that you were an African-American lady, but also I didn't know you were so open with your sexual preferences. I'm going to go with within the zone. Even ah, But double tap is probably so much more likely. Let's go with double tap. I'm probably going to use that more often. I think there's, those are good options. Our, corp, our corporal, I should say, uh, <laughs> Beeps, great name. It's our mech trooper who is without her mech because she's wounded. Uh, she, we can give her life regen or two bonus damage against targets that have been autopsied. Oh no, sorry, this is damage control or two bonus damage against targets that have been autopsied. We'll give her the bonus damage. That's been really useful on our other mechs so far. All right, and what else do we get? Some melt, panic increases across uh, some other parts of the world. Now we're gonna let some time go by here. Okay, go to the situation. Jesus, they just never stop giving me missions. Our sources have reported a developing incident in Newfoundland up the coast from St. John's, which is just the, the most Canadian way to say this. A fishing village has gone dark. Reports from intel sources suggest alien involvement. We should send in a team to investigate and figure out what happened. I mean, I guess we should, but panic reduction doesn't really worry me. Um, but it's a council mission, which means it's relative, relevant to the story, so I guess we'll do it. And is everyone good to go here? It seems like it's... You need to get a, uh, a little bit of carapace armor. Now again, you know, sometimes these XCOM episodes don't necessarily line up exactly as well as I would want them to. We're going to end this episode here, even though it's a short one, because the council missions can sometimes be 30 to 45 minutes long each, and I don't want to accidentally make an hour-long episode. In any case, thanks for watching so far. Apologies for the short episode. Hopefully soon we'll be able to get some of this research done so we can make progress on our, you know, actual quest going on here. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you next time.